What's up and welcome to the Single Player Experience Podcast, the premier podcast for single player gamers to find out about good single player games to play. And that brings me to a question, almost the topic of the show, so to speak, that we got from one of our listeners who wanted to ask, who asked, asked, what games would you recommend to me, who to someone who's never played a Souls game before? Would you start me off with Elden Ring? Would you start me off at Bloodborne? Where do I start? And I thought to myself, I'm like, I could do extensive research or I can go to the expert himself. So my guest today is none other than the expert when it comes to Souls games. He's been all of them numerous amount of times, as a matter of fact. You know, he has mowed through the, the Forgotten Lands of Elden Ring. He's mastered all the elements of Bloodborne. He's Sekiro does, doesn't do anything for him because he can beat every single boss blindfolded at this point. So I knew I had the right guy for the job. My guest today is none other than Harv. The Souls King, Parmar. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. I I can't I can't beat Sekiro blindfolded, but I can't beat <laughs> I can't beat that game within an hour though. I can't. That is I can't insane. Beat... <laughs> that is insane. I so, can't beat that game within an hour. <laughs> so I gotta ask you, like, we we can start with a question off the top, but before we do that, like, for the people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, um, I am. Uh, I'm a person from Canada, from the uh, from the great uh, white north up here. I do content on YouTube, Twitch, that kind of type thing. Uh, I go by beard and the hair, and then I play a lot of Soulsborne games. A lot of Soulsborne. Uh, I've been playing games since I was like five or six. Ever since growing up, watching my brother play like RPGs. RPGs have always been like a like a close thing to me. Uh, when it comes to the Final Fantasies, and then once I started playing Souls board games, I just fell in love with this formula. So, like, it's just one of those things where I, right when a new Souls board comes out, I am all in, and I'm like, all right, let's do this. And that comes into like a lot of people ask me, not even this question, they also ask me like, what is the best non Souls board game you you recommend? And it's so hard to recommend those because they just don't hit the feeling of a Souls board <laughs> game. They just don't hit that feeling. So, you know, like, we'll dive into that as the show goes on, but, like, what's what's your favorite Souls game, like, Souls Born game that you've been playing lately? Uh, well, my favorite one of all time is Bloodborne. Okay. Uh, I think the world that they've created, the the combat system that, that they've implemented in that game is far none the best one they've ever done. Uh, I love the old school, like, very Castlevania-esque kind of art style and uh, location that they picked. And the way that the game rewards aggression and rewards you to be a little bit more aggressive. Because mm -hmm. we all know, like, Dark Souls is very sword and board. It's very, like, methodical. You need to, like, pick your pick your spots when you need to hit and stuff. Bloodborne is like, you know what? If you're going to be as, like, if you want to be right in the enemy's face, we're going to reward you for that. And that's, that's one of the things. And I feel like they're going to that direction a little bit more as uh, they create more games, as From Software creates more games. But I just love the world, and I love uh, all the boss fights. So many good boss fights in, in Bloodborne as well. Okay, so I got to ask you, just out of curiosity, which would you prefer? Like, which would get you more hyped, I should say? Bloodborne 2 or Bloodborne Remastered? Honestly, a lot of people would probably say Bloodborne 2, but I'm going to say Bloodborne Remastered. I don't need, like, <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, if Bloodborne 2 was coming out from, from software, mm -hmm. I would be all for it. I'd be like, yes, do it. But if it's coming out from a different studio, uh, just give me a Bloodborne remaster. I, I don't I don't need... 60 frames per second, you'd be good. Right? I'm good. Basically. I'm fine. Yeah. Because I can't... Sometimes when you beat a boss, the game goes at like 15 frames per second. I was like, you can barely even move half the time. Um, but yeah, because uh, I, I think I, I, re I read this somewhere that Miyazaki even said, like, it's it's their... Uh, I think it's called Magnum Opus. Like, mm -hmm. it's their... It's their... It's... The game that it's it's one of his favorite games that he's created, and he said he's never going to go back to it oh. because, well, one Sony owns the IP, right? Unless yeah. Sony comes and says like, "Here's all the money to to make it," <laughs> uh, he's not going to. So like, it makes sense because why 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 try to make something better than Bloodborne when Bloodborne is like the top echelon of, of Souls games at this point. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. So to answer the the listener's question, the listener. Souls newbie is what he he wrote in as. It's Souls newbie. What yeah. what Souls game would you recommend to me? A Souls newbie. I 
I get this question a lot, actually. So you, this is not the first time I've got this. <laughs> I get this from friends. I get this well, while I'm streaming as well. I a lot of people say go to like Dark Souls three or go to like the OG Dark Souls. I I think Elden Ring is the place where a lot of people should start. Oh, wow. One is because you don't have to deal with Dark Souls mechanics. Dark Souls <laughs> mechanics are annoying sometimes, mm -hmm. right? When you take an Estus flask, you can't move. <laughs> you can't move when you're taking Estus flask. That that like that just hinders your your uh, that just hinders you. Uh, two. It's just the Elden Ring just looks better. It's got a it jump. Does. It's got a jump, and mm -hmm. that's a lot of a, a lot of things. Like, you know, the janky jump like Bloodborne does, like Dark Souls does. Like you don't have that janky jump where you have to like hold down circle the entire time. The one of the biggest things I say Elden Ring, or one of the biggest reasons I say Elden Ring, is because it's a game that doesn't pinhole you into one direction. So. Say you're on a boss like Market, for example, and you keep getting your ass kicked. Oh, sorry, can I swear? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, Let it fly. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you get your ass kicked by Margaret over and over and over because we all know we always hit that boss. We always mm -hmm. hit that wall. We're like, man, I can't get past this. I can't get past this boss. Like, it's it's so hard. And you just keep going and going. And then, like, three hours later, you're like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I, I'm done, right? Like, we, I, I know lots of people have bounced off Souls games because they can't beat a boss. Right, which is understandable because bosses are hard in these games. Um, but in Elden Ring, you can go into a different direction, go into a catacomb, go into the confirmed Caitlin if you want to go over there, <laughs> go 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 where, wherever you want, and then come back and try the boss again. Right, it's it's one of those things where you don't need to bash your head against the wall over and over. This game has so many weapons. That you can you can go with you you have different weapons you have different uh, builds you can do compared to all the other Souls games this one has the most variation right you can go more melee you can go more magic if you want to do it that way right it's just they have a plethora of stuff that they've done from different Souls games and they've added it to this one and I feel like if you want the best of all like all the games that they've made this is. Elden Ring is the one. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. So, like, so as a person who's played all of them, do you feel, do you ever feel the hankering that you would love to see, like, what they did with Elden Ring, but in a more linear fashion, or you love the openness? You prefer it to be open from now on? I I would want them, I know this is, this is a lot to ask for, because I know <laughs> game development is very hard, and it's very long. Uh, this game took them a good, probably a good five years to make. Uh, I would want them to go back into their linear, more not guided, but like met. Not even like, it's not even a Metroidvania at this point because Metroidvania is like a little bit different. But like, yeah, not full open world, but just Bloodborne is the best example I could give because there's one place where it has like different directions you can go, and they're mm -hmm. all kind of interconnected. I would want more of that again from from software because I think it's a little bit more uh, personal. Because uh, like once you get to like the challenge engine, then you can see where the procedurally generated sh stuff comes into play. Um, but I'm glad that they flex this muscle because mm -hmm. it tells it tells people that yeah, we can make this. We can, we have this formula down to a T, but we can put it in a different box in an open world box we can say like yeah this this formula works in an open open world style i don't mind them making another elden ring at some point which is <laughs> probably going to happen the dlc is going to be huge their like their dlcs have always been really 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 big yeah for you sure go into yeah they've, they've been very meaty they go into the old hunters you go into uh the ring city and stuff like that they've been huge and I, I I love that. I enjoy it. I am ready to put hundreds of hours back into it again. I have, God, I think I have 600 hours in Elden Ring at this point. What? <laughs> that's, yeah. That's yeah. not even crazy because I feel like that's the, that's, that's the average for Elden Ring. <laughs> I mean, because I do a lot of challenge runs and speed mm -hmm. runs and no hit runs and stuff like that for it and no death runs and stuff. So I play that game a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, But, but I, I am excited for them to get back to what they what they're really really good at and that is more personal kind of games which i think they'll go back to and i think they'll i think they'll go back and forth i think that's what they're going to be doing uh with with uh their souls born stuff especially when with with miyazaki at the helm 
So, you know, you were talking about Elden Ring DLC, but um, what is it? Shadows of the Erd Tree is, yeah. you know, coming probably like next year, I would imagine. Um, is that probably going to be your most played title of 2024 when it gets here? Man, I don't know. There are so many games coming out, and I'm just like, I, I'm already drowning right now, okay? I played Tears of the Kingdom. I played uh, so much Diablo recently. I'm going to be just lost in Final Fantasy 16 in in, mm -hmm. in in a little bit here. Um, But most likely, yes. That that game is my most anticipated game for next year, because I don't, I don't see it hitting this year. No. Um, it's just... The, the the way that they're going with their story because I know a lot of people have like a problem with like their the way they tell their stories. Mm -hmm. um, Elden Ring is honestly probably the like other than Sekiro, Elden Ring is probably the most in your face story that that From Software has done, which is crazy to think about. So you know, help me out because I was one of those people who you know don't necessarily gel with the, the the form of narrative. I get it, like I respect it. It's just one of those things to where like. I'm, I guess you can call me a traditionalist, and when it comes to games, I kind of want the narrative spelled out for me. Give, give me a character, let those, me understand you want the those character. Yeah, you want those bombastic yeah. cutscenes or those cuts, those heartfelt cutscenes that you have with character and character development, right? Yeah, almost the PlayStation yeah. model of things. <laughs> yeah, so to speak. exactly. Their third part, their third, uh, third person over the shoulder. Yeah, for uh, sure. model that they have for sure. Like, like Elden Ring isn't like that because you have a character creator. You have all of this stuff where you can't really make it that way because your character is. Pretty much, you're, you're role playing as that character, right? Mm -hmm. So it's harder to make that connection with uh, your own character. But uh, there are way more cutscenes in this game than any, mostly any other Souls game, where it tells you the story right in the cutscenes. Sure, you're gonna have to like for the NPCs and stuff like that, like side NPCs. They have their own dialogue. You have to exhaust the dialogue, <laughs> that kind of type thing. And you're going through like you're sifting through you know item descriptions and stuff like that. But when it comes to the main story and the main bosses you're you're flying through, the story is told much more concisely in this okay. game. Sekiro is different. Sekiro is the one that like that is what you're talking about. That is the mm -hmm. one where it's just like this is the story. We're going to tell you everything in cutscenes, which is very weird for from, from Software to do. But I think it was a necessity in that game because that character is a character created. That's an actual character you're playing within the story, and that character affects the story, and ha and that uh, character affects the people around him, right? The yeah, wolf that makes is sense. like, yeah. you know, the wolf is mm -hmm. like he is part of the whole lineage and everything. But when it comes to the Elden Ring, it's just like things are happening around you, and you're just kind of like, you know, doing things. Mm -hmm. But like, they tell it to you on a like, not always on a silver powder, but they tell you a lot. Like Bloodborne is just like this dude's in a fucking <laughs> in, in, a, in a graveyard, and he like growling. You're like, taste the blood, and you're like, what? <laughs> what, what is happening here? <laughs> you're like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> Bloodborne is my guilty shame, uh, my like guilty shame of the game I've never beaten. Uh, as far as like, it's always on whatever like my PlayStation Four was always on it. it my PS Five is now on it. It is. I want to keep it there because it reminds me that I my work is not done. Sadly enough, I know what part you're talking about because that's the part that, that wrecks me every time. That guy in the graveyard where he's Father just like, Yes, you know? yeah, yeah. He's the he's the the rage quit moment for me. And the like, funniest thing is, he's probably the best first boss you could fight in a whole Soulsborne game. Oh, really? he, teach, he, he teaches you everything that you need to know about the game mm -hmm. he, he is like the quint like to me the first fit, like the first hour or two of bloodborne is the best way to introduce somebody to a soulsborne game because cathedral ward is done so well where there's so many winding paths that go all the way around to like these different areas but you always somehow loop back into cathedral ward that makes sense mm -hmm. and then he is the very first boss to get to Cathedral War. Like he's the he's the first uh, wall that you hit, and now he, I feel he worse. Just, he's the first <laughs> boss. But he's, I mean, he's well, he technically can be the second boss uh -huh. if you fight the cleric beast. That's but, the werewolf looking thing. Yeah, that's the, that's, yeah. The, the one that screams in your ear the entire time. I beat him. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that way you just smack that booty and you'll be yeah, good to go. For sure. uh, but yeah, no. So that boss teaches you how how to do one on one combat with a hunter, like with a humanoid mm -hmm. enemy, and then he teaches you how to fight against like a beast type. So that so you have two phases in there, and it, that's pretty much what the entire game is at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It's just fighting either a humanoid or a beast type. And so I just think that it's just 
perfectly done because he doesn't he's not like overwhelming overwhelmingly difficult and he teaches you how the mechanics work in the game i guess he'd be one of three because you could also do blood star beast as well if you want to do is that one in the sewers yeah yeah, yeah i remember that one yeah i remember that one as well yeah yeah so I got, you know, like another question that was asked um, before uh, before on the show. I'd never brought it up because I'm not an expert in any of these matters. If you if if they came to you and asked which one of the Souls games should we adapt to a movie? Like obviously PlayStation's adapting everything to a movie nowadays. You you see. Yeah. I was just like, which one would you like to see as a movie or anime? Sakura. Oh, that'd be badass. That'd I be think sick. that would be. I think that would be the best because, like that, that that would automatically go from from game to to movie because it is very. The story is ve- told in a very linear direction, right? Mm-hmm. And you can you can have these little side bits if you want, and like the lore of of it is very intrinsically Japanese as well, which is great. And the some of the enemies and monsters that you fight in that game are very traditional as well and it's just it's just a very interesting story about a a kid that has the power of immortality and can resurrect at any time and it's just like as people are trying to covet that blood and try to use him as a tool and it's just it's just a very very good, cool thing and they're trying to use it for war so i i think that would be my number one and that, number two by biases against well is bloodborne I know we're, I'm not giving too much love to Dark Souls 1 or 3. We don't talk about Dark Souls 2. We, we don't <laughs> no. talk about that one. But, like, dude, 3 is such a good game. It is so good. Like, I recently played that game. I recently did my No Death Run for that game. And going through it, it felt so good to revisit again. Because okay. the bosses are so much fun. The The level traversal is, like... Are none compared to like any of the Dark Souls games. It's just it's just so well paced, and like there's no I don't think there's an area that I don't like in Dark Souls Three. Let me ask you 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 brought up an interesting little tidbit there. Like for the people who are listening, uh, you know, to this episode, how in the hell do you do no death runs in these type of games? Like I get the concept; it's just unfathomable to me that there's people like you out there that just don't die, absolutely don't die. Oh, there's there's people. Days. There's people that do this with no hit. That well. is insane. Yeah, um, a lot of practice. So, so the way that I tackle these, I've I've done it in three games so far. The way that I ta- I've done it in Dark Souls Three. I've done it in Sekiro, and I've done it in Elden Ring now. Mm-hmm. The way that I tackle these things is my very first uh, section of me going through this is I need a route. So okay. I need to know what items I need to get, what upgrade items I need to get, what bosses I need to face. Well, obviously, you're not going to face all the bosses. Uh, you just face like the, the most important ones. Uh, yeah, and what weapons I'm going to be using for the entire run. Okay, so you're planning a strategic so route, So I, I strategically plan all of that stuff out. Once I do that, I go through and do a dry run of like, okay, how many deaths will it take? Well, th- then I do the practice on the bosses. So okay. I keep a save file on every <laughs> single boss. So I load up the boss, hit it, do it, load up the boss again. I just keep practicing. Then I do a dry run. I'm like, okay. Now I'm gonna go from start to finish and just see how many deaths how many deaths I, it, it took me. I think Elden Ring took me. Uh, I think by the time I got to the end, I was on like forty something hit, uh, deaths. That's not bad. That's and not I was like, that's that's not bad. I, I mean, I don't have to fight Melania, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. So um, I was like, okay, that's that's not too bad. Uh, but that that run took me a whole month to do. That is crazy. A month straight of just doing Elden Ring. Man, how did it feel when you accomplished that, though? Oh, it felt so good. It it, it was it was it was like a burden off my shoulder, but I enjoyed it so much, though, <laughs> because it's one of those things where <clears throat> every time I died, I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, start up another one, wow. and then I, and then I got like to like I've I've got I got to like uh, Horaloo and or uh, Elden Beast so many times without dying, and then when mm-hmm. I died there, I'm like, you know what, start another one up. The so ones you- that. The ones that hurt the most is when you die at the beginning. You're like, fuck. Because, like, Elden Ring has a 40-minute prep period. Yeah. Of you just running around grabbing items for 40 minutes. Oh, and that's, that's the rough. worst. 
That's, that's the worst. worst. <laughs> So, you know, what is like you've been in all these games and putting hundreds of hours in all these games. What's probably your favorite story that you've that you've lived through throughout all these games? Like the favorite soul story. Uh, I really like the DLC when it comes to Bloodborne. I it has three of the best bosses in a Soulsborne game. Oh, really? In my opinion. Yeah. When you have uh Ludwig, uh, who is oh my god, the soundtrack for that kit for that boss is so good. Um, he, he's the first boss. He's probably one of the most difficult bosses in the in the DLC. Um, and then the Lady Maria fight is just it's just a special fight. It's the do- it's the doll that you that you're fighting from Bloodborne, but mm-hmm. before she was like a doll, before she was like she, when she was an actual person. And it's just so much fun because there's just so much give. It's like a dance. It feels like a dance. It feels like you're doing like a Sekiro kind of type thing where you hit, you hit her, you dodge away, and she kind of kind of comes comes towards you. You do your dodging, and then you come back towards her and stuff like that. And it's it's just a really really fun and engaging fight. Um, and then the Orphan of Cause is the most annoying fight. Not the most annoying. It's the hardest fight I've ever had. In <laughs> oh these games. wow! Yeah, even over millennia. Yes, even over Meladia. Because, like, Meladia, the thing is, like, if she hits you with Waterfowl Dance, it's over. you're pretty much done. Yeah, yes. you're done. Like, that's it. Like, it was so funny <laughs> when people f- got to Melania for, like, the first, like, week or first, like, mm-hmm. like, three weeks or two weeks of, like, fighting her. Everybody got so frustrated with Waterfowl Dance because then nobody knew how to dodge it. Everybody just kept mm-hmm. on getting hit by it until people started figuring out what the actual way to dodge it is. But, like... Man, that that move is very punishing. Very <laughs> punishing. And I always thought, like, Miyazaki, why would you do this to you? Why would you do this to people? <laughs> I think he enjoys the torment of others. <laughs> so much. Every time I die in Elden Ring, I say, I, I scream, why, Miyazaki? Why would you do this? <laughs> so what is your favorite personal story from, like, these type of games? My personal story? I think... To me, is probably beating Dark Souls one for the first time. Okay, was I that your first Souls game? It- that was my first Souls game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was that game, and then because uh, I, I didn't, I didn't do Demon Souls till later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dark Souls one was my first one, and I like when I beat it, there wasn't a big hullabaloo about like how hard these games were and what what, what these games were because like I wasn't really in those circles at the time, mm-hmm. and but like. The way how slow and methodical that game was, just fighting some of the bosses, like finding Orenstein and Smog for the first time was one of the most jaw-dropping things I've ever had in like gaming. It was it was insane. Fighting both of them at the same time, and when you kill one that takes the powers of that one, the <laughs> other one, you're just like, what? I gotta fight you at full health again? Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, Dark Souls 1 was a very, very special game for me because it showed me like a different way that these games can be played and how rewarding games could be like how rewarding a lot of these games are. And I still, and, and the crazy thing is I, after all that time, I still get that from these games. So I still so, get them from these bosses. So is that why you love this genre so much? Is it the rewarding nature of like, over accomplish uh, like accomplishing like this impossible task or what seemed to be an impossible task yeah because there's games out there like you, where we play like the last of us or we play mm-hmm. like uncharted we we play them for the story right we we yeah. go through all these trials and tribulations just to get that next cutscene, just to mm-hmm. get the next because that, that's how i think of last of us and stuff it's like I, I my reward for fighting this boss or whatever this is is the cutscene. my reward for fighting souls born bosses is the experience of experiencing them in a way <laughs> it's just experiencing wh- what the developers put in and how they th- what they throw at you and if i can overcome that with what i have and i love that i love that so much because i have to like go in there i have to prepare for the fights i have to be the appropriate level obviously you can kind of over level if you want but like usually i'm pretty concise because uh i don't like to like you know steamroll through them mm-hmm. uh but like yeah, it's just me versus the boss, and that's 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 it. That's what whatever whatever happens happens. But and then once you once you finish beating your head against the wall, and you get that win, and you're like, oh my god, that felt. You know what? That's three hours, well spent. 
Oh, that's amazing, man! Oh, I, you, you know, like you you bring in a whole another perspective of these games because, like me as a person who's like super into narrative heavy games, or like that over the shoulder, you know, third person action type games, or even like first person adventure games, like we like we see in Skyrim or Elder Scrolls and such like that, like. That the way you describe these games, it's almost like a romance, you know, like you you're you love these type of games. And I can understand that. Like, I can see that from that perspective of you, like why these games get you so entrenched into their worlds. And man, I was like, it makes me want to play it. Like, honestly, it does. You like you, I, I don't know if like if like you've played some of these, like I, I know you've played some of these games. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. what you you will know what I what you might know what I mean about this is like. There's so much environmental storytelling when it comes to these games. When you play Elden Ring, right, for the first time, or when you go into a castle at at Elden Ring, everything is there for a reason, right? There there are monsters there for a particular reason. Why, why Why are werewolves in this area, but they're not in this area? What is this one random werewolf doing here, or this random bird that's doing here that is not the same as other like other ones there are reasons why these things are all sprinkled around the world because it's it's it, there there's lower implications for that particular thing there oh. obviously it doesn't affect mm. the overall narrative right there's nothing yeah. to do with the overall narrative but there's reasons why particular things are happening or particular enemies are in particular places that's and really cool it, yeah, it's it's one of the, it's like that attention to detail that I really really enjoy about these games. And every time I like I go into a new castle, every time I go into a new dungeon, I'm always looking to see like what's around the corner and I love exploring every nook and cranny of it because it just it just heightens that experience even more when I'm going through it. So I'm curious, what was the what's your favorite build on the Elder Ring? My favorite build um I would probably like so Dark Souls. Is, Dark Souls has always been sword and board for me, mm-hmm. uh, but this time for for Elden Ring, I did the bleed build, which is probably the most common build that a lot of people go through. They use the katanas. They get either the Rivers of Blood or the Moon Veil. Those are the two katanas that people use. Um, that was my build when I beat the game. I like the dual swords as well. The dual swords are a lot of fun, um, but. Honestly, when it comes to some of the weapons, because like once I finished the game, I started experimenting a lot with this game. <laughs> there, are, there are some crazy weapons in this game. Like there is a, um, I forgot what it was called. It's a, it's a crucible golden order sword or whatever, mm-hmm. and it just like when you use it, when you use its art, it just does a whole like wave of just like golden like just like a gold damage kind of type thing and it just eviscerates everything in front of you that is insane yeah it's 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 insane and is like it or like orvi or or dia's great sword oh, no, that, that that one is like there, there's an orvius uh with the dual dual swords mm-hmm. where like when you uh when you use the art it like puts light like lightness or uh, light on them yeah and it's it's so cool it, like the because it changes its weapon combo as well once you do that that is so it's, it's yeah it's it's uh it's art changes as well so it's 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 really cool how how they've done that there's there's a lot of really really cool weapons in this game and that's 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 one of the reasons why I also recommend it as your first one because hmm. there's so many that you could choose from you can reset your build at any time too as long as you have larval tiers you could reset whatever you want and then switch to another weapon as well so as insane so like. So you've played a, a lot of these games. Let's talk about some of the games that are Souls like. What are some of your favorite Souls like games? This is where it gets a little complicated for me. <laughs> I am not a fan of most Souls like games. Oh wow! Is it just like is it because it's kind of close to the genre you love, but not like exactly like it? There's always something off. Okay. That just does it. That that kind of like ruins it a little bit. Like like a lot of say people say Mortal Shell is the next Soulsborne kind of game. It's not Didn't quite it's hit like, the same. It, it just doesn't hit. It just doesn't hit. It just feels like they're trying, but like they're trying for the sake of just trying to be a Soulsborne. It just doesn't have that like that feeling. The okay. closest so far that I've gotten is Lies of P when I played the demo. Ah, oh, it is so That's, cool. That it's one so is cool. the closest. Yeah, I I love the aesthetic of it. I don't know the story of like Pinocchio and Geppetto and stuff like that, mm-hmm. so I'm very excited about the world. Uh, and I love the different like 
it's the same thing as like Elden Ring where you have so many different weapons and different combinations you can have with like the baton and like the the handle, which is really, really cool. And it is it is as bloodborne as, as hell. I don't know. Have is. you finished have you finished the demo? No, no, I, I played the I played the hour and a half of the demo, like and okay. I haven't finished. Okay, so so what the hub world is like the hotel is pretty much the hunter's dream. It's like it's it is exactly. It really is. Yeah, you have a woman in a wheelchair, which is the same thing as Garabin. Mm-hmm. You have the doll, who is pretty much the doll, <laughs> and then you have an upgrading person. Like it's it's almost the same. And I, but I'm very very excited for that game. That when I played the demo, I was like, this is this is what a Soulsborne like should be should feel like. Mm-hmm. I haven't played Remnant yet. I feel I, I've heard a lot of good things about Remnant, uh, from the Ashes, uh, but I haven't I haven't checked that out. That's my plan this year at some point to check it out. And, and um, what's the other game that that came out semi recently or early this year? The um, what was it? Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's it, it didn't quite stick with me for very long. Um, let me. Oh, oh, Steel Rising. Steel Rising was one I tried out. It didn't quite. I it didn't feel right to me. Um, and then the other one was what was it? It was the it was almost a oh, Wulong. Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Wulong, so Wulong, uh, I, I saw like in your background you had a little bit of Wulong, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, a lot of people try to compare the Neo games, which is Team Ninja. Yeah. And they, they're the people that made Wulong as well. Um, I can't count those as Soulsborne games. I just can't do it. I can understand. It is not I, close they're, enough. They're, huh? they're, they're too arcadey to me. They, they feel, feel like they are trying to you know you're trying to get your numbers as high as possible you're trying to like they got the dna of it like they have like you know dodging hitting they're very difficult you have a certain amount of well i guess you have a certain amount of lexers and stuff like mm-hmm. that I, I totally understand that but like there are so many skills in that game <laughs> like you have an entire skill tree in that game you have um crazy weapon arts for like weapon damage and like different uh ways you could have different you have different stances for your weapons as well i know wolong i don't think it went that deep but like yeah there's no. it's just i i just don't count them as that genre but i love neo neo is one of neo 2 is one of my favorite games of all time oh wow yeah i oh. put almost 200 hours into that game i absolutely adore that game so, you know, these aren't quite, like, Souls-like either, but they do have Souls mechanics into it. How do you feel about the Star Wars games? Like, Star Wars Fallen Order and Star Wars, um, what is... Uh, is Jedi Survivor. One? Jedi Survivor, thank you. I mean, they tried with Fallen Order. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Fallen Order. I, I don't think... I, I personally don't think the combat's good in Fallen Order. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's just something felt off about it. They did a better job in Survivor for exploration in my opinion oh yeah i think the sure. exploration and the way like sh- where levels loop and stuff like that it's very souls boardy because like you can unlock mm-hmm. shortcuts you can go like you once you do a section you can skip that section forever to get the shortcut and stuff like that thank the goodness. combat <laughs> yeah you thank god because there's so many x sections of that game you are like man. i don't i don't want to go back through here again um the the combat's still the same to me it's not great i don't, oh, I don't and- think it's not great I can understand I, that. I don't, I don't know why they added so many stances to the game. It's like but six you can't, of them now. <laughs> but yeah, but you can't stance dance. It is like weird, how isn't it? how cool would it be if you had one lightsaber and while you're in mid combo, you switch to your blaster and the lightsaber. That while dope. you're in mid combo, mm-hmm. or you split the you split it in two. Like you're mid doing your 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 uh, attacks and stuff like that, or like you do double while you're in the middle of it. I just I feel like that's a missed opportunity. And it like you seems could do like it. so much with that. Like you could do so much with that. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. It seems like maybe they didn't want to make it like too arcadey in the com like combat, but yeah, I'm right there with you. I it's I think we're gonna see that in other franchises though, as more like more studios get a hold of the Star Wars IP, like. I know recently we saw Star Wars Outlaws, which is a vastly different game, you know, but it it seems like a lot different combat, which I'm thankful for, you know, like, even though... Variation, man. If you're going to give me me a lot of Star Wars games, make them different. Make them all different, right? I'm not... I I don't want, like, the same Soulsborne-esque, you know, (laughs) Soulsborne-esque thing. 
Mm. Give me something else. Give me give me a whole different kind of way that you're gonna tell me the story. And because like I I love Soulsborne games, but I love like like you like you do third mm-hmm. person over the you know, over the shoulder adventure games that are I love. The, dude, Last of Us is my top one of my top five games of all time. I I love that game. Okay, we're we're shaping up the top five games. Well, I think we're missing oh, yeah. three. What's the rest of the, what's the rest of the oh, three? Yeah. Um, number one is Bloodborne. Okay, number one is Bloodborne. Uh, that game. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I honestly don't think it'll ever get surpassed, which what? is kind of weird to say. <laughs> um, my number two is is The Last of Us. Okay. Uh, I absolutely love that game. Uh, that game changed my impressions on video gaming in general. I, I did. That. I did not think that you could tell a game. Like I didn't think you could tell that kind of story in a game. I didn't either. No, I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. It's in my top five as well. Yeah. Um. I am still emotionally still trying to recover from Last of Us Two, so uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll see if I ever go back to it. Um. My number three is Sekiro. Okay. Because of um. It's because. It is so different from their original formula mm-hmm. because it is carrying and not dodging. And that it is... took me a long time <laughs> for my to, to trick my brain into like starting to parry and not dodge. It, are, does it still happen that way to where like your brain instinctively wants to like dodge? No, not anymore. My my, okay. my Sekiro brain kicks in, and I'm I'm right back into it again. Like I'm right okay. back into it. So that it doesn't have to be anymore. But I told people like. If you're if you're if you're a Souls War fan, you're jumping into Sekiro, which I I completely uh, support. Jump into mm-hmm. Sekiro. Sekiro is a very very good game. Um, don't treat it like a Souls game. It is the <laughs> it is not like a Souls game. I don't think there's and like there's not that much Souls identity in that game. If I'm being completely honest, but uh, yeah. Uh, and then one that recently made the list for number four is Tears of the Kingdom. What? Yeah. So you know, a I lot didn't... of similarities there with um Tears of the Kingdom is your souls genre there, yeah, especially with Elden Ring. I don't like I didn't like Breath of the Wild that much. I'm the same. I don't like Breath of the Wild at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a it's a meh game with mm-hmm. like that not that great of a story. Like there isn't a story in that game. And then the exploration is kind of boring for the mm-hmm. most part. Uh and um the powers are boring as well. Like, why would you give me a square bomb and a circle bomb? Like, what? <laughs> they like, do the same thing. <laughs> they do the same thing. Like, why would I want to do this? I, I, I get an ice block if I have water around me. Like, what? <laughs> if I don't have water, this thing's useless. Exactly. Um, but Tears of the Kingdom completely changed that for me. Because the, the powers are amazing. And the way that the physics engine works in this world with these powers is... It's just so good. I I have like 150, 60 hours in this game, and I'm just like I it's I did as much as I possibly could in this game. Like I got <laughs> I got every every I got every like item you could almost get. I got 400 of the Korok seeds. Like it was just I was all in this game, and then I went on vacation, and then I haven't went back to it ever since. <laughs> but so is this the Harv like Harv game of the year for 2023 so far? So far, yes. Okay. Oh, there's you, you one. You said game that with that, hesitation, though. There's one game. Final Fantasy 16 is the other one. Whoa, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, like here, here's my thing, and I'm not saying this is a person who didn't necessarily like fall in love with Tears of the Kingdom. Like I, I respect everything Tears of the Kingdom do- has done, and I, I played the game quite extensively, and like I could see why people love it. It's still not my type of game, if I'm being honest with you. But sure. I, I digress. It's like. I feel like Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have the staying power that Breath of the Wild did as far as the zeitgeist, you know, social media, all that kind of thing. It's like I in Elden Ring, like Elden Ring came out last year and they took the world <laughs> over. Like and still and, people still two people talking about it. Exactly. Like yeah. Elden Ring is something that like came out and it changed the game. And like I feel like Tears of the Kingdom did that for two weeks and or maybe even I would say a month. And then you also have like Oh, people have also like dipped off to play Diablo. People are now looking forward to playing Final Fantasy. Like, people are now talking about like the Starfield impressions and such like that. It's, you know, I, I have a, I think I know why though. Is it more it's the same? What? It's more the same. Uh-huh. It's it's Breath of the Wild again. It's the same map, right? Mm-hmm. 
with some differences, right? There's little there's additions to the map as well, which I won't get into because if people want to play it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like it all, it's the same. You're going to the same places. <laughs> Everything is every like most of the whole map is still the same, right? So you're you're doing the same thing. You're do, you're literally doing the exact same thing, but with different mechanics. Like like you're still getting the four beasts. You're still uh going to fight cannons. You're still <laughs> doing this. You're still you're still getting Korok seeds. You're still doing you're doing pretty much the same thing. I guess more the same world, but you're just doing it with. Uh, not even a different coat of paint. You're just painting the same thing <laughs> over again. Um, just enough differences to where people don't complain, basically. Yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, like, I think my game changer is just, like, the powers are just, like, what you can do in this game. And the developers were like, yeah, just go do it. Don't worry. Don't worry if you break the game. It's fine. Because I haven't read, ran into one bug in this game. No, I ran no. into a lot of duplication glitches. Mm hmm but I haven't ran into any bugs in the game. Yeah, so, like, thankfully, you ran into duplication. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. But they patched them, and then I was like, you know oh, what? I probably, I probably don't yeah. want to go back now." Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no that 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 game really kind of surprised me because yeah, like like you said, I'm not a Breath of the Wild fan, so it was it, this game had to do something special for for it to to hit. I mean, I just played the Final Fantasy 16 demo. Oh my goodness! And fantastic. I'm like. I like this game. Like I, I get. I feel like Zelda's gonna take game of the year this year for a lot of people because mm -hmm. it is one. It's a Zelda game. Yeah. Two. It's a Nintendo game, and it's a Zelda game. That's number three as well. <laughs> uh, and when um, I, I do think that Final Fantasy 16 is gonna be a better game. Mm -hmm. Personally, I just don't see people putting it over Zelda. Oh, I, I'm right there with you. Like right. I, I, I'm right there with you. I think Starfield might have the chance because it's been so long since we have have had like a Todd Howard style, like Bethesda style open world. I, if that game hits like a ten out of ten, I think it has a shot. But, <laughs> but I have my own, I have my own problems with the Bethesda games. I, I understand. Like, I don't. I don't believe ninety percent of the shit you're saying right now to me. No, so I'm gonna wait. I'm waiting till. But I. But I completely. If that game. If that game fucking hits. Yeah. Oh my god, that is gonna be like people are gonna lose hours, like thousands of hours into that game. Oh, easily, easily. And uh, don't get me wrong, I, I'm right there with you. I have my own problems with Beth Bethesda style games, especially like considering I don't like No Man's Sky, and it feels like a lot of like what that game is built around is No Man's Sky. And like I I don't necessarily that didn't attract me, but like if they can tell like a 16 nuanced stories in that universe and have specific worlds that have meaning and such like that. And I can also like raid other people's ships and make it my own ship. I'm like, you might win me over, but like, I don't, I think it, I think you're right though. I think like, I can see that being nines out of tens. I can see that being eight out of tens for some people. Like, I don't, I think that's sort of going to be an outlier. And I think Spider-Man is going to have that same problem of being like another Spider-Man game at this yeah, point. Yeah. Is it going to be seen. more, is it going to be more of the same? Are we going to mm -hmm. be doing the same kind of type thing? I think the difference between Zelda and Spider-Man, though, because Spider-Man's going to have, a, 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 I, I think it's going to have a gripping story, I which is too. what's going to, mm -hmm. what's going to kind of propel it a little bit. Zelda usually doesn't have a gripping story. Zelda is just like, <laughs> like this one was probably one of the most gripping stories in a Zelda game, other than uh, o o Ocarina of Time, if mm -hmm. I'm being completely honest. Uh, but like, it's still not amazing. It's not like, oh my god, like, guys, the narrative <laughs> of Zelda is like the selling point. It's now. It's the, it's the open world. It's the selling point mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but when it comes to uh, Spider-Man, I'm just like, dude, I just want to know where the story is going to go next. Same here. Same here. I have like, so many guys, theories. You can give me all these bells and whistles of, like, flying through, like, Manhattan and going to, like, Brooklyn or, like, uh, like you know, all the new places and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, like... I know you guys are going to tell a good story. I want to know where this fucking story is going. That's exactly where I'm at. I'm like, I don't <laughs> even care what game mechanics you throw at me in a, in a trailer like that. I don't want to see any more, like, any more of this game until it comes out, by the way. Yeah. I'm sold. I'm like, you already yeah. hooked me. I'm like, I just, I want to know what this, where the story is going to play. I want to know if my insane theories on, like, who's actually going to be Venom by the end of this game is going to, going to take hold. And I want to see, like, I have so many theories of the cutscene, like, the, already the in-game cutscene of, like, 
oh my goodness, I bet they're leading up to like the third game by doing this and such like that. I'm like, I bet they're like, you know, and this is just no spoilers towards any of the first two games, people, but I bet we're probably going to get in some form or fashion, like them leading up to a Gwen Stacy style, like Miles Morales style, like mini game to where like, this is going to like just how Miles had its own like almost DLC like side story game. I think Gwen yeah. Stacy is going to get one as well. Which is also like flesh out the world, right? They've yeah, created sure. they've they've created their own world. They've created their own uh, their own universe there. And like they said, this is an original story that's not based on anything. No, and that's I think that's the most exciting thing. I I like I don't mind them basing it off like like I don't mind when things are based off of comics, but I do feel like there's kind of a spoiler there where you kind of know where it's gonna go. Yeah, this one you have no idea. It's free reigns, and I'm I'm all about that. Just just. Just tell me a good narrative. That's that's one of the things. Tell you. It, and like I I I if I have a feeling Starfield's gonna tell a good narrative because I but like the like Fallout this. 4. I like yeah. Fallout 4. It was it was a good game. But yeah, it's not gonna be this structured as like yeah. this is or God of War was and stuff like that, right? So that's it's when you do open world, it's tough, man. It's it tough is. to it do really is. very, very compelling, uh compelling stories. Which is why, like, Final Fantasy 16 interests me so much, because it looks like they're putting an effort into making, like, a intricate story with that game, you know? So, this, so Final Fantasy 15, 14 is my fifth favorite video game of all time. Oh, okay. Which is the, which is the online version, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the, the MMO. The team that created Final Fantasy 14 uh, 2.0, like, the one that, we, that mm-hmm. is out right now, is doing Final Fantasy 16. So, that's why it gets me very, very excited for this. Because it's the writer of one of the best expansion packs that they've ever made, plus the producer of Final Fantasy 16 or Final Fantasy 14, and the the localization. Because what they did, so like what they did for Final Fantasy 16 is that they got they wrote the script in Japanese, mm-hmm. translated to English, did all the voiceover in English, did oh, ever really cool. did all like all the mocap in English, and then retranslated it back to Japanese. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but they said like this is more because like on the Western front they want to try to like get more Western audiences to play this game, and even playing this game you can notice like it is written so well, mm-hmm. and it is it it seems like the voice acting is on point as well, right? And it's just it's one of those things where I have all the faith, and I I do think like this game will probably be my game of the year at the end of it, uh, because it's my most anticipated game this year. But I already know that Zelda's gonna Zelda's gonna sweep <laughs> sweep somehow, dude. Somehow. You know, I you know, with everybody being so split on like where their attention is divided, I can see this being almost like a Elden Ring situation to where like Elden Ring like won at the Game of the Year awards. Like it won the game of the year, but God of War took a lot of like a lot of the mi- like minor awards. And I'm yeah. not saying minor awards like they don't matter. I mean like took took a lot of the other awards. I could see like a game like uh, Final Fantasy 16 taking like best action adventure, you know, like versus, and I could see like Diablo taking like best on, like online game and different things like that. But and and then Zelda just taking home the big one this year. Yeah, I I, I probably agree with you when it comes to that. They will probably take their genres for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, like Final Fantasy, I, I guess Final Fantasy would be more. I don't know if that would be. That would be probably RPG. Um. But uh, yeah, I I do. Oh, the game of the year list is going to be insane this year. Oh, for sure. How do you narrow that down? To yeah, how do, I don't. There, this this year has been so crazy. I don't know. I don't know what you like. Final Fantasy IV remake, for example. That game yeah. is amazing. And like you can't. I, I keep forgetting about that game because that game came out this year, and it felt like that came out last year. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like, oh my goodness. Like you got RE4. You had um. You had what was it um. Not Dead Cells. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania came out this year as well. But you yeah. had um you had um what is it? Dead Space? Not Dead Space. I'm not yeah, a dead, horror. Dead Space, yeah, dead space, dead space remake, space. yeah. Yeah, yep. Dead Space remake. You also had Metro Prime remake. You had um Hi Fi Rush has already been forgotten about, but it came out this year as well. Yeah, yeah like, that came out like in January or something. Yeah, Didn't it? Or something yeah, like that. Yeah. For sure. I'm like people were obsessed with Hogwarts Legacy periodically. I'm like, it if this has been a stacked year in in a year that I've this has been a year I never can remember any video games coming out with this much, like this, like cadence you know, of like big game after big game after big game. Yeah, my my bank account has not agreed with this. <laughs> 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 
Uh, no, and then we're just halfway through the year now at this point, That's right? That's insane. The Final man. Fantasy coming out, Starfield coming out, uh, I, Forza's going to be coming out this year as well. Uh, yeah, we, there's there's just a lot of games, and it's 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 nice to see a diversity in games. Oh yeah, uh, which I which I love. Um, I know we've gotten off the Soulsborne train, but we we're coming back. I got a couple of questions loaded yeah. up for you, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it it's 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 very exciting to see uh all these different genres just really thriving. I would not. I didn't even think I'd ever play Diablo because I didn't play Diablo three. I didn't mm-hmm. like Diablo three that much, and I, now I'm like fucking knee deep into diablo 4 at this point <laughs> like i'm actually really really enjoying it and i it's just it's really really cool to see are you playing that game primarily solo or are you playing that with friends a lot friends it's okay. it's most that is my social game at this point is with okay. friends do you uh, feel like you'd like it as a solo player or do you feel like the friend component is what kind of carries it i would say the story is good is, is done solo really well okay I, would, I, I recommend the story to do to, to play it on solo uh, but the rest of the game, the game is so grindy once you finish the like the actual campaign mm-hmm. that you kind of need, like you don't need to have friends, <laughs> but like you gotta be doing something else at the same time. Yeah. Like this like once the narrative is over, there is literally nothing else in the game except killing things. Okay. That's so it, it becomes so, very repetitive after that. Very repetitive, yeah. It it goes back into his ARPG <laughs> genre very well once you finish the story. <laughs> the story is done really, really well because like it the the camera actually like comes down onto your character. The mm-hmm. cutscenes feel sort of more intimate. That's something that Diablo really doesn't do, and so the story actually felt like it has some gravitas uh, to it. And it's it's a it's a good change for for this franchise. But again, it goes right back to its roots again, where it's just killing monsters as fast as you can and just mindlessly running the same dungeons over and over and over. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, you know, like. I always do this for a first time guest and it's a it's a task, so to speak. It's a challenge. You know, this show is all about like giving people video game recommendations. So I got to ask you, what three games would you recommend to people and why? Any three games? Any three games. Any three games. Okay. I would say the first game I would probably recommend is The Last of Us. Love it. I right? really <laughs> love it. Yeah. I think because of how narrative structured, it, like how 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 cinematic it is, mm-hmm. um, the gameplay is is really good too. It's it's engaging for the most part, uh, unless until you're you know throwing the bladder and boosting Nelly ninth, the ninetieth time. <laughs> but other than that, it's 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 an, it's engaging gameplay. Um, I for number two. I, I'm trying to think of a Soulsborne game that would be good to do, but you said you would recommend Elden Ring being the first Soulsborne game. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the first Soulsborne game for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like for like to 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 recommend for play. Yeah, I would say Elden Ring because like the thing because... is like you you could get over a hundred hours of that game, right? Like you can get so much time into that game, and there's so many places to explore. There's different like castles. There's different. Uh, uh, catacombs and stuff like that to like to to um to explore that you can get lost on that world for a long long time um and number three it's a hard question isn't it it is yeah because like <laughs> I'm, I'm tr- because the thing is like i'm trying to like think of a draw gen- like trying to like go over all the genres and something like that, but like you know, what? I'm gonna be selfish on this one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my roots and say Sakura is number three. Okay, I like it. I yeah, like it because that gameplay is king. Mm-hmm. I like, like that it. that that gameplay is li- like literally the best feeling game to play in the Soulsborne genre. You know, Harv, my thank you for doing that, by the way. But my next question for you is. You are a really cool streamer. You know, I've happened to see you on the the Twitch quite a bit. Yeah. And, I've, you know, I've also participated in an Uno tournament where you've hosted. Thank you for inviting me, by the way. <laughs> and that was fun. That was a lot really of fun. Was. I enjoyed it. it. I want to really do, I, I do it again one of these days. Let me know if you do. I, I'll gladly participate. But, man, um, I got to ask you, like, what type of games can people expect from you as a Twitch streamer? Um, This year, it's been a lot of variety stuff. It's okay. been um, a lot of Tears of the Kingdom, Diablo, Final Fantasy 16 is going to take over for a while. But 
honestly, for me, it is I do a lot of Soulborn content. I do a lot of challenge runs. My streams are pretty chill for the most part because I just do the same runs over and over because <laughs> it's the way it's the way that I can like interact with chat mm -hmm. and I like, talk to people because if I'm just doing like the same thing, like, it, uh, people enjoy watching it, so I'm like, all right, I'll I'll, I'll do it. Might as well do it, yeah, yeah. And but the thing is, like, I I will I will I will keep beating my head against that wall until I get it done. Like it took me a whole month to get the Elden Ring No Death Run done, but it, it was so fun to see my progression through it because. I got better and better every single time. And the fact that like people were hanging out and they like seeing that kind of content. And I think that's one of the things that when you go into a directory, when it's like Elden Ring or Soulsborne or Bloodborne, 90% of the time when you go into those directories, they're challenge runners. Okay. Or they're speed runners. Mm -hmm. Very seldom do you see like a lot of people like doing their first run through or something like that. They're, obviously people do. Mm -hmm. But most like the the streamers on there, like they're doing challenge runs and stuff like that, and people enjoy like that. I think that's the staying power of Souls games, honestly, is people just doing different kind of challenge runs. Like recently, I did a, a full on randomizer for Elden Ring. I did Fog Gate oh, randomizer. Mm -hmm. I did uh, enemy uh, randomizer and item randomizer all together. So like you go into ca uh, to go into Stormville Castle, the, where you go to the bargain <laughs> fight, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're Volcano Manor. That is insane. <laughs> Yeah, you just pop up in Volcano Manor. And so, like, every fog gate takes you to a random place in the game. That and it's just insane. so... It's so fun to, like, just kind of... And then once you go to a boss fight, you don't know what boss fight you're going to get, right? It could be... Ra it's all randomized. Oh, that would be torture. <laughs> yeah, like, you could get Melania in, like, the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of the game. Oh, my goodness, you just get wrecked. What? Yeah, is yeah. That so like crazy. it's 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 just like those kind of things you can do to the game and like there's a lot of other things you can do uh to the to the game to like make it more exciting. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the content that that I like doing. I that's the my YouTube is completely different from that. But when it comes to the streaming stuff that's that's what that's what I enjoy doing. I I do it doing a lot of challenge runs for these games. So, um my la my last final question for you. By the way, thank you for being on the show. You've been absolutely wonderful. Lo love to have you back and and to talk about uh, things outside of Souls games. Obviously, that's your expertise, but you're knowledgeable about all things games. So, thank you again for being on the show. No, but, I pre I appreciate you. I appreciate you asking me. I I, I when <laughs> you asked me the first time or you asked me a while ago, I was like, "Yeah, let's go. I I'm, I'm 100% down." And I I like answering questions about Elder. I li I just like talking about games mostly. Yeah. Um but when it comes to Souls Raid, I I want more people to play these games. That's that's <laughs> that's the whole gist of it. I just want more people to play these games. I know they've hit the mainstream now with Elden Ring, but I want more people to play these. More experience. Like I want people to see how they experience this game. And like what they feel when they experience it. You won me over. I'm gonna give this a shot again. Like I okay, so my Elden Ring story is that. I beat my head against the wall trying to beat uh, Margaret the Fell. And I run off, like you said, kind of did my own thing for a little bit, came back, wrecked Margaret. And then I felt really accomplished. And then I thought, I think it was like the king in a the king in a courtyard and such like that. He had like a Godric. fire hand. Yeah, I thought Godric beat him down. I, I've managed to beat him down. And you know? I feel, you know, I, I feel cheap, first of all, because I use this this rock stick, this stick that would shoot these purple rocks at people. Oh, and like dude. Rock sling. It felt so overpowered. It really I mean, did. If I'm being honest. It, but the thing is, like, I, I don't fault people for using magic. I don't fault people for doing what they do in the games. Because, like, the game gives you these things. Yeah, that's Use true. them, right? Use, like, just, it's, it's the player's prerogative to, like, try to figure out what they want to use and what's going to be the best in their, in their tool set, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you build towards. So, like, if you're going to be more of a magic build, be a more magic build. Just know that you're going to get one-shotted by 90% of the things in the yeah. game. But, like, that's just, you know, just kind of... I, I wouldn't... I would not fault anybody to do anything in these games. This is this is why they put so many weapons and so much magic in these games. The reason why I felt bad, though, is because I was a samurai. Like, that was so, <laughs> that was when I, I'd gone around this with my little... With my katana and everything, I was wrecking people. I was doing the little thing where you, like, cheese your katana, then you, like, whack people over it and, like, yeah. hit that super strike and such like that. I was doing really good. And then I start hitting that wall with Margaret and such like that. And I was just like, oh, I might need magic. So I went out and I found this magic stick. Just I don't re even remember where it was. Found it. And then I found out I couldn't use magic. So I YouTubed. I was just like, how to use 
wand or how to use staff and figure out like how to use that real quick tried it out on a random like guy that was like a random giant that would come down from like a cliff and like he would ambush me and such like that tried it out on him managed to hit his big toe a couple of times and knock him at knock his ass out and i was like yeah. oh this is overpowered <laughs> I, was, I start building magic up and i was a magic slinging like samurai and such like that i yeah. like i felt bad because i was i abandoned the samurai ways just like just like Jin Sakai did, and um, you know, Jin Sakai did, <laughs> and uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And Ghost of Tsushima, yeah, I abandoned my samurai ways as soon as it was, as soon as it was convenient, and I started using uh, magic. Yeah, but the thing is, like, the one thing about the samurai build, especially like if you're gonna go Moonvale or Rivers of Blood, that's mm -hmm. that's broken in its own sense. Rivers of Blood is one of the most broken weapons in the game. Is because that where it, you like bleed yourself and then you can? No, well that's 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 an art that you can okay. get. Uh, uh -huh. seppuku, I think it's called, where mm -hmm. you you stab yourself and you do more damage, and then you can get a amulet or a an accessory that if you are, uh, if you have blood around you, you uh -huh. do more damage. Your weapon, obviously, when you stab yourself, has blood on it, so you have that's more. That's crazy. That's right. Cool. You have that yeah, level of detail is amazing. Yeah, it's it's really really cool, and so so I had that amulet with like two katanas that that have blood on them, so it's mm -hmm. double the damage, right? So that was my ending build. But bleed in in the bloodboard is, or not bloodboard, sorry, bleed in in Elden Ring is broken because it's percentage based, not a set damage. Oh, so when you amazing. bleed something with like like a million HP, it's like fifteen percent. Oh, okay. So you're gonna bleed like fifteen percent of the health away, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I feel like once you do what, like once you do a bleed thing, it's the same thing as magic at this point, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so they're broken, but like you use it because they're in the game. That's amazing. That's really cool. I yeah, you you've convinced me. I'm gonna go back to the was it the lands between? Is that the what lands it? between the lands between? I'm gonna go back to Elden Ring and I'm gonna try this out again. And because I I stopped at the like the the boss gate right after you beat the what is his name a godric is the king yeah godric is the the guy in stormwheel castle yeah and then that unlocks uh, lyurnia where where this footage is right now from okay uh, right here yeah this is lyurnia of the lakes that's and crazy so, like, you just know it off the bat your hand like that <laughs> dude i i know all the all the areas in this game i i have I got to the point where, like, once once you do the run so many times, mm -hmm. everything is just memorized. So, like, I can do, I can do the, my routing from my no death run. In like, I think the no death run took me three hours. I could probably get it down to two at this oh, point. Okay. Yeah. So, so where I left off was like there was a guy who was like, you know, those little like carts. It almost feels like they're little cars that shoot fire, and you have to kind of get behind them and hit the ass. And like, yeah, yeah. there's a dude controlling it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, like, there was a castle door where I could see fog there, but I didn't have the key to get to that fog, like, get through that fog. I don't know where yeah. that key is at, and that's kind of where I stopped. So, if you're talking, oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about Leonia Castle. Uh -huh. So, there's a there's a dragon in Leonia Lake that's guarding it. It's the oh, Glenstone okay. dragon. And then you just go behind it, behind the dragon, grab the key, and just run off. You don't actually have to beat the boss. Oh, so you okay. just grab the key and then walk away. Obviously, the boss will probably aggro you, but you could just grab him and run, and then is you the, can get into. The, is the, the little haze itself. like the little yellow haze? Will it lead me to the dragon, or I have to find the go find the dragon? The dragon is in in the in the lake somewhere in the okay, lake, cool. so it's in the open world somewhere that you'll find. Okay. It's it's in the lake area, so like I don't I forgot what, like where the actual place was because I'm again I'm doing this with my with memory my, with exactly. memory from like my no death run because I I have to grab it every single time, so. I, I I can pinpoint where it is on the map, but like I don't like, I'm trying to think of where the map is right now. But like yes, it's it's there. Once you grab that, then you can get in. No okay. problem. I'm gonna try it yeah. out then. I'm gonna try yeah. it out after what almost a year of not playing. I might need to just rebuild, just do a whole little like start over and such. It's a great it's a great thing about these games, man. It's the great thing about these games is like you jump back in and it's just like you're gonna forget it for a while. Like I went back to uh, when I went back to Dark Souls to do no, that No Death Run. Uh, I had to get muscle memory back again because, like, mm -hmm. I was, dude, I haven't done Dark Souls in so long, <laughs> and then I'm just like, this game is janky as fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? And I got the, I got halfway through it. I, I haven't finished my No Death Run of that game because, like, there's, there's so much RNG involved in some of the fights that, like, mm -hmm. if you don't get it, you're kind of screwed for the most part. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. 
Dude, man. Uh, so my last question I was going to ask you is, are you ready? Because it is time for our pro nerd trivia portion of the show. This is where we ask our esteemed guests five different nerdy topics. They are randomized. I do not control them. We just ask five different topics. It could be in the realm of PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. It could be Marvel, DC, anything that's considered relatively nerdy. Uh, so, Harv, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to fail. <laughs> okay, so don't feel bad. We've only had one person, and I think this is, I think, close to 96 guests so far, and only one person's gotten all five right. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so okay, like, that's, that's, that's what it's, okay, all right. So, yeah, I'm like, no pressure there, no pressure no, there. No pressure, no pressure. All right, so here we go. I'm looking here, and the first question is in the realm of Batman. In the realm of Batman, you you sound you're laughing, Harv. Is this something you feel confident in, or is this something you like? No, oh, shit. I, I'm not. I'm not a comic book person. So it's oh, be no. Fun. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I'm not All a right. comic book person. I'm not an anime person. So if it's any of those two. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so let's see. You might be able to still still get this one. It... All right. So, what was the name of one of Bruce Bruce's parents? What was the name of one of Bruce's parents? Oh, God. What was the... Oh, Bruce Wayne was him. Uh-huh. I have it. Martha? Martha. Yep. Yeah. Martha was one okay, of them. Yeah. Mar Martha is... I, fuck, I remember this from fucking Batman versus Superman. Superman, Martha. yep. <laughs> Did you say Martha? <laughs> I feel like it was memed more more so than it actually was celebrated in the movie. Oh, one thousand percent, one thousand. Did you just say Martha? <laughs> That's so funny. That's oh so funny. God. All right, so who was the dad? What's the dad's name? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got that. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas. All right, so. All right, this one is in pop culture movies. So, pop culture movies. What is the name of the main main character species in Avatar? What is Dobby. the name? Yep. So you're two of two yeah. so far. Yeah. Two of two. That's good because I, I just watched the Ubisoft thing a little while ago. Oh, did and you? Then, yeah. And then because the Avatar game came up. So <laughs> Far Far Cry looking to, to oh, you as well? One thousand percent Far Cry. That That's is Far <laughs> Cry in the Avatar world. I'm okay That's, with it, honestly, because yeah. it's also got multiplayer, which is if you want to play that game in multiplayer, you can with other with another person. But it's a checklist game. Ubisoft games are checklist game. It's, oh, it's, exactly. Yeah. If the I Prince, play it. So, yeah. yeah. The Prince of Persia one looked fun, though. Oh, like, God. That game that was, was so, so good. good. Yeah. So good. I'm, I'm very ready excited for that. that. That's the kind of Prince of Persia game I want. Oh, yeah. For sure. For wow. sure. All right. So, our next question is in the realm of PlayStation. So, PlayStation trivia. I feel like you're gonna get this one. It might it might be might be a little fun. All right, so there was a PlayStation game. This came out in the PS1 era. It is a mascot and a mascot reptile. Gecko? Or Gek? What is Gex? the name of the mascot reptile that was in the PS1 era? Is the question. Is it Gex? Gex is indeed correct. You are three yeah, for Gex. three. Yeah, Gex is. I was like, okay, I was, I was trying to remember because like PS One had a lot of mascots. That was the mascot error for sure. <laughs> yeah, because like like Jack and Daxter, mm -hmm. Crash, Gex. It's a lot Love. of them. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah, for sure. So so far, you're doing pretty well. Three of three. Now yeah, we now get... the pressure's on. Now, now yeah. the pressure's on. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's exactly what I was thinking. Next, we have Star Trek. Oh, Star Trek. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I feel like this is the hardest category because I feel like if you're not a Star Trek person, no one in pop culture talks about that job right yeah. now. <laughs> you need to get it. So, yeah, I feel like that's a hard one. Okay, so. All right. Who? Let's see. In Star Trek, let's see. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna do another one because that is that's a beast. All right, so <laughs> who is the Vulcan first officer aboard the ship? Oh, ah, oh, crap! I know his. I he's uh, 
the actor that plays him is Leonard Nimoy. But I don't. Oh God, what's his name? Spock. Yeah, live long and prosper. Uh, there we, Spock. Yeah, there we go. yeah, there <laughs> you got we it. Go. Wait, you got okay. it. I'm, cu- I'm curious. What was the other one? <laughs> okay, okay. Here's the <laughs> other one. It was it insanely hard. At least, what was the name of the Cleon commander who ordered the death of Kirk's son David? He's I. Uh, so uh, you watch Star Trek. I've watched uh, the movies, the new movies. Okay, like those, gotcha. those three. Uh-huh. So I, I, this is probably from the TV show, if anything. Okay. Uh, um, I wouldn't have known this to save my life. No, I don't remember the guys. I, I, I think I remember his face, mm-hmm. but I don't remember um, the name. The Captain Kirk is the Captain Kirk. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would have got no, that. I wouldn't have got that one at all. Absolutely yeah. not. Mm-mm. Not in a million years. Um, all right. So the last question, though, is in a very cool realm. A very cool realm. It is in the land of cartoons, specifically okay. 90s cartoons. Okay. How you feeling about this one? This this one this one could be hit or miss because we have Canadian nineties cartoons and you guys have American nineties <laughs> cartoons. Oh no! So, so like it might be a little bit different. Oh, it might be a no. little bit different. <laughs> All right, what character had a dog named Pork Chop? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw recognition in your face, and then I also saw like oh. Oh no! Uh, pork chop. Nineties cartoons. I'm trying to think of nineties cartoons now. Are you a nineties kid? Eighties kid? Nineties kid mostly. 90s yeah, because I was okay. born in eighty eight, so it would be nineties. Yeah, you're nineties. Sure. You're nineties. Yeah. yeah. Pork chop. I have no idea. Who had a dog named Pork Chop? Are you, are you, is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I'm trying to think of that. I'm going to say Arnold. That is a really good guess. That is a really good guess. Unfortunately, it is not the correct answer. Damn. It Fellow Nickelodeon alum, Doug. Doug! <laughs> Doug. 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 Oh my god. I was also, either gonna I was gonna either do Doug or uh what's the guy? The fist. There's always that meme with the fist. The fist. The fist. Arthur. Arthur, yeah. Arthur. Yeah. yeah. Doug. So uh, fun fact, Doug, the only character that has been on two separate networks, like has been on Nickelodeon and and Disney Channel. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Had new episodes on both networks. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ours was, uh, when we had Doug, it was uh, a channel called YTV. Whoa. I've never even heard of YTV. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the Canadian equivalent of, I think, Nickelodeon, what we had here. That is amazing. So, yeah. Harv, thank you so much for being a great sport and answering all of our questions, diving in between the lands between and all the Souls-like questions, talking about the games you're looking forward to. Before you go, though, I do have one last question. That's where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me at Beard and the Hair everywhere. Twitter, YouTube, <laughs> um, TikTok, wherever it's Beard and the Hair. Uh, but yeah, you can find me there. I make uh, My YouTube content is completely different from what I do on Twitch. It is review videos. It is um, n- gaming new stuff, like that kind of type thing. My Twitch is all about playthroughs of like different games. Uh, a lot of Soulsborne content, so a lot of like Soulsborne challenge runs and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you can find me there. Pretty much, uh, I stream three days a week. Beer in the hair and uh, videos every week. Once, well, at least once a week, there's a video. That is absolutely amazing. Everyone, go check them out. The links will to all those will be in the description of this episode. Harv, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm I'm excited to see how you go or how you get on <laughs> with uh, Elden Ring again. But no, seriously, one of the, one of the biggest things is single player games. I feel like are the backbone of video games and mm-hmm. you doing this for, for single player games is awesome because the, these, these are things that really move people, these games and these games tell amazing stories and recommending to more people just makes it even better. 
Well, thank you, man. Thank you. Just doing my due diligence as a single player gamer. <laughs> I so, mean, we're getting less and less of them, I feel. So <laughs> if it does feel that that way. So I'm like, I like to champion the ones that I can and, you know, bring on people with expertise to kind of like speak, speak to the ones that really speak to them. And you, you ring that bell like 100 percent, especially with the Souls game. So thank you again, everyone. That's been Harv. I've been Sebastian. This has been the single player experience. And until next time. Stay safe, stay gaming, and we're out. Peace, everyone. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Also, for more videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here. Thanks again for watching the video, and for more like it, stay right here at the Pro Nerd Report channel. So, that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. I also want to let you know about the single player experience discord server it's a perfect place for single player gamers to talk about the good single player games that they've been playing lately and to get video game recommendations think of it kind of like a book club for single player gamers the link to join will be in the description once you're in feel free to share your video game backlog list talk about the good single player games you've been playing or give your feedback on the show if you have a game you think it should be recommended and should be reviewed let me know about it right there before we go, I just want to thank you once again for listening to today's episode. Stay safe, stay gaming, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.